Hello and welcome to another Leco problem. Today we're going to be doing the problem of the day for July 9th and it's going to be substring with largest variance. And so in this problem you're given a string and it says the variance is the difference between the number of occurrences of any two characters in the string. Note that they may or not be the same given the string s. Return the lar largest variance between any substrings of s and a substring is a contiguous sequence of characters. So contiguous very important. You want to recognize contiguous that because some algorithms can be used for contiguous and some can't. So in our first example, we have A, A, B, A, B, B, B. And so the substring with the largest variance is going to be this because our large character is going to be B with a count of four. And then our small character is going to be A with a count of one. And so the difference is four and one. And so that's how you can think about like kind of starting to solve the problem. You're going to have some string. You're going to pick the letter with the highest count in the string and then the letter with the smallest count in the string. And you don't really care about any other letters. So we can actually boil down our problem to that, right? We can have a letter with a big count called like big, let's say, and then we can have a small letter. And that's pretty cheap. And we can actually get, as you can see, S length is only 10 to the fourth. So if we actually take every single letter of big and small, it's only 26 times 26 which is a pretty small number. I think that's like less than a thousand. And so that doesn't cost us much. I mean, obviously it costs us something, right? It still costs us, you know, like 10 to the third or so, but because we have 10 to the fourth characters in S and that's why you want, you want to get kind of used to looking at the characters and look at looking at like, okay, how much, how much do I have to work with? How much room do I have to work with to at least get a good solution? Because for these hard problems, usually if you can get it to solve, you're pretty, you're gonna be pretty close to the optimal solution, because they 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 make the constraints pretty hard on you, right? If it's an easy problem, your constraint is gonna be like a hundred, and then anything will pass. Any brute force, whatever you want, will pass. Like if you're not passing, what are you doing? But for the hard, generally, you know, there might be like one optimal. Maybe there's like one more optimal. So maybe like you can have an n squared and an n at best, but you're never gonna have like some n cubed solution that's gonna pass a hard problem or something. You know, assuming that n cubed isn't the optimal, right? You're never going to have an n cubed solution that's going to pass a hard problem, and then the optimal is like n. It's very rare. And so if you can just have something that pass for a hard problem, that's generally going to be pretty good. So you definitely want to be looking at constraints and ask yourself, how much room do you have to work with? And I think at around 10 to the 7th or 10 to the 8th or around there fails on leak code, something like that. So this is going to be like, you know, close to failing, but, you know, it's going to be still fine. So like n squared would, I would say, probably fail. But anyway, so we have a big and a small. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through every single character for the big and we're going to go through every single character for the small. And then we're going to try to get the variance in that string. Now, how are we going to do this? Like, let's say for this string here. So we have AABB. And obviously in this string, the best solution is going to be when B is our big character, right? And A is our small character. So we're going to go through all the characters and Clearly looking at the string, this is going to give us the best solution. But how do we actually figure that out? Well, so what we're going to use, and it's pretty rare, we're going to use Kadane's algorithm. I don't know if you've heard of it, but essentially Kadane's algorithm pretty much just says it, it gives you the largest possible sum in a contiguous subarray in an array. And essentially all you do, it's pretty straightforward algorithm. All you do is you have two choices. So you have choice number one, you have some, so you have a current total and two choices. You can either take uh, one, choice one, add, so so you're iterating through your array, right? So you can either add the cur value to cur total, or choice two, replace cur total with cur value. That's essentially all it is. You go through an array and to get the largest possible sum, you do one or the other, and then whenever you have a current total, you just keep you keep doing the normal thing that you do where you have some result, and you keep saying like result is maximum of result and the current current total, and at one point your current total is guaranteed to be the value. That's essentially all you do. You go through an array, and so it's actually, I guess we can go through an example here. So let's just go through an example of like some numbers real quick. So we have like two, negative four, eight, negative six, nine, right? And so what would this look like with Kadane's algorithm? Okay, let's take a look real quick. So we have a current total, it's called C. We're gonna go through and we're gonna, so the first value I think you have to take, like assuming, assuming, yeah, I think this, the first value you have to take, 
So because there, you don't have a cur total, I mean, I think initially you probably want to assign your cur total to be something like negative infinity, just to make sure. Because you're like, imagine all your values are negative. Your your maximum sum subarray is going to be negative. So I think you have to take that. So I think what you want to do is you want to start at like negative infinity as a starting point. Okay, and so we we're at this two. We have a choice. We can either take the two, or we could take the two plus the cur total. That's pretty straightforward. We're going to want to just take the two. Now we're at negative four. So now we have a choice. We can either take the value of negative four or we could take negative four plus the cur total. So obvious again, we're gonna take negative two plus the cur total. So we're gonna be at negative two. And once again, we're, we're, we are like checking the, the maximum of the currents is gonna be the result. So, so far our maximum was is negative, uh, actually our maximum was two. So let's just say result here. So far our maximum result is two. Okay, now we're at the eight. So we can either take the eight or we could take the eight plus the negative two pretty obvious we're going to want to just take the eight let's take the eight now our new result is eight then we have a negative six we can either take the negative six or the cur total essentially you can quickly see that as, as long as the total is positive you're always going to want to do the cur total plus the number right so we're going to take the cur total plus the number now we're going to have a two and then our result's still bigger and the nine we're always going to want to take a positive number and as long as our total was positive before we're always going to want to keep that plus number now we'll have eleven and now our result is 11. And so you can see the actual longest subarray is going to have some 11. And that's going to be what exactly here? Assuming I did that right. So 17. Yeah, so it's, so it's this subarray right here. This 8, negative 6, 9. And so that's essentially, we're going to be in roughly the Cadane's algorithm. But we're going to be having some modifications. And I'm going to show you why and like what things you can't do. And actually, this AABBB example will demonstrate that, like why, uh, what we can, what we can't do, and things like that. So we're going to do this exact same thing for Gadeen's algorithm. Our big letter is B, our small letter is A, and we're just going to do the total. But now, we don't always have to take the value in the beginning, because if, if our value is bad, like, we can always return a total of zero. You know, we're always going to have a, turn a total of zero. So we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to have a cur equals zero. We're going to have a result. And we're going to go through this thing. Our big letter is B. So let's take a look. So we're going to go through A. And we're going to say, do we want to take the A? Or do we want to just discard the A? And like I said, we can have a subarray link zero here. And so that would be, you know, like we're always going to have some way to have a link zero. So we're never going to want to do that. So, but either, either way. So our current is, if we take the A, our count will be negative one. So assuming our big letter is worth one point and our A is worth minus one point, our count will be negative one. So we don't want to take the A, so we'll just move on. So we're going to move on from the A. We're at this A. Do we want to take the A? No, we don't, obviously, right? It's negative. Let's not do that. Okay, now we're at a B. We definitely want to take the B. So now we're going to take the B. Our count's going to be one. Our result's going to be one. A, do we want to take it? Do we not? So you only want to reset your value here. This is going to be a slight modif- it's not even a modification. You do always, you never want to reset your value when your total is zero because our total will be zero here. But remember this right here, this is very important. So between the number of occurrences of any two characters in the string. And so when your value is zero, you're either going to have the empty string or you're going to have some other characters. And you need two different characters to make a valid string. So you'd rather have BA than zero, because even though the count is the same, once you add more Bs, if you actually imagine this was zero, like imagine you didn't take this, if you have this, you don't have any other characters. So this actually wouldn't be a valid sub substring. So that's one so that's one thing we need to be careful in the Cadane. When the count is zero, we don't actually want to reset the string the string. We only want to reset the string when it's negative, but not exactly, and I'll show you cases for that as well. why we don't want to always reset it when it's negative. Okay, so anyway, so the count is here, now let's keep going. So we have this B, okay, we're definitely taking the B now. Like I said, we whenever we either take the B plus the count or the count, we always wanna take the B plus the count assuming our count is not negative, right? So our count's not negative, so we're gonna take it, we're gonna have one here, our result's gonna be two. Now we're gonna go to this B. Do we wanna add it to the count or just take the letter? Well, our count's positive, so we're always gonna wanna add it to the count. Now we have two and uh, this result uh, yeah, yeah, that's right, actually. Okay, and this result should be two now. Okay, and then we take this last B. Do we want to take it? And do we want to add it to the count or just use the B itself? Obviously, we want to add it to the count. Okay, and so our final result here would be three. So you can see kind of like anytime your total is negative, you want to reset it. 
And as long as it's positive, you want to just keep going, and then you're just going to keep checking the total. But there are some small things you need to do, and so let me show you for that. There are some small edge cases. There's actually a decent amount of edge cases in this problem, and so let me show you one of them. So let's actually go back over here. Now let's actually say that, let's actually do this. Let's actually say our letters are C and C, and this will show you clearly why you don't want to just delete the character right away. Okay, so let's say our let's say once again our a, a is our small character and our B is our big character in this example. So we're gonna have this count and let's run through this, right? So we're gonna have a count. So like I said, we only want to our rule before was reset anytime we have a negative count, right? So let's take a look at this. So C our, is not a character we care about, so we can just take it. I mean, it doesn't matter. Take it, not take it. it doesn't really matter. C is not a character we care about. Okay, now we're at this A, and do we want to take the A? Or do we want to skip the A? So we said before that if A is negative one, we just want to skip, but let's see what happens when we actually skip. So let's say we don't take the A, which means we, you know, or we don't take this whole array. Now we're at a B. We want to take the B, but we can't, this is not a valid string yet, right? We need a string with two different characters. So we can't actually append to the result here. So we keep going. We'll obviously take the B. Okay, now our count's two, but still not a valid string. And now here, it's still not a valid string. So even though our count is three, we can't actually return here because we need two characters. And so we, we actually needed to take the A because if we took the A here, then even though this would be negative one, we'd have a bunch more positive characters. And so there is one condition we need to check. We need to, we need to keep track for how many A's there are in the string and we can skip them. But when we're at the last A, we actually can't skip it because we, we have to have a string like we're just checking for A's and B's right now so we have to have a string with both A's and B's so when we're at the last A we have to take it so let me write that down so last A or last small character whatever it is have to take you cannot skip it okay and so that, that so that's one edge case right where if you just say okay we're at an A it's negative we don't want it and so so that would actually look like with this A we'd have a count of negative one we would not have a valid string yet because we're only we only care about a's and b's so technically we do have valid string but obviously we're never going to push to the result if it's negative as well right because we're always going to have a result of zero at, at you know at worst because you can just take a character in itself like right so if the small is a character and the big is a character then obviously that's going to be zero so you're never going to want to push negative outputs but anyway so here we're going to actually take this b we have to keep the a we can't reset it so now our count here will be zero now we'll take the B, our count here will be one. This is valid. We're gonna push that to the results. So the result will be one. And now our count here will be two. Okay. So so honestly, the same example could have been done with just like this, where we just have A B B B. If you only have one A, you have to take it. If you don't, you like this is one of the errors I had where I just said, like, okay, well, if I have a negative character, I don't want it. And then I had some string like this, and then you can clearly see that you don't want it, but then you don't have a valid string. Actually, I think I ended up returning the three, but then, you know, that wasn't a valid output because you, you always need to check if you have a valid string. So that's the other thing. We have to we have to check, are we at the last small character? And also when we actually write to the result, we also need one more thing. So we need a count small, right? Obviously, whenever we write to the result, our number is going to be positive, so we are always going to have a big character, but we need our count of the small character in the string to be positive. To write to the result, that means that we have a valid string. So we need a count small, and we also need to know what's the last small character we have to take. So what we're actually going to do preemptively is we're just going to say, let's do a counter. Let's do a counter through of S to get the count of every single character. So then when we loop, when we do these loops with the big and the small character, we can just say like, oh, how many how many uh, small characters do we have? And then we, every time we every time we encounter one, we can say like, oh, do we have any left? Do we have any left? Do we have any left? And once we only have one left, we have to take it. So so we do need a counter. And the nice thing about the counter of the characters is actually counter is O of twenty six because there's only twenty six letters. So this is pretty much constant space. So you can just you're essentially getting like a free counter here. Okay, so there's one more other case, and like I said, this is this is the case. This is why you need the small character. So for the second example, for this A B C D E, no matter what your big and small are, your counts are always going to be one. And so like you're never going to have, 
you, you know, if you did like a normal Cadane where you just said like, okay, my big is A and my small is B, let's say, right? Or or, or even the same way. Let's say let's say you're um let's let's redo this. So let's say it's like this, right? B A C D E. This is another problem that like would fail. You'd say like, oh, okay, well. We have a result, we have a count, let's take the B, we want the B, B is a big character, cool. Now, you cannot push up to the result unless you have your small character also, which is A. So this is why this is the other condition that you need. You need the, you need the count of the small character to be greater than zero, and you have to take the last the last small character. So it's pretty much a cadane with these two modifications, where the small character has to be greater than zero to push up, because you need to have an array of two characters, and your you know, you have to take the last small character. And other than that, it's pretty much a straightforward Codain's algorithm, which is quite rare, honestly. And I mean, I think most easy problems are just like implement Codain, but this is like a, can you even come up with its Codain? Quite tricky, to be honest. And can you come up with all these edge cases? Also not not straightforward. Like, I, I would be surprised if without looking at anything, you, you could figure this one out, you know, like, oh yeah, I need to actually take the last A and then this one maybe you could maybe this one's a little bit straightforward because you know your str your string needs to have two different characters okay so now we actually have enough for the solution and actually do have it pre-written and we're going to talk about it and so like i said we are going to take the counter of every single letter and we have a straightforward cadence so we have a result we have so so the local local just means the i think i use local instead of count so it's literally the same thing so you can replace that with count if you wanted to you can actually do that here, totally fine. So this is like our count that we used in the pictures. So count, count. I don't know if you can do a finder place in Likode. Maybe you can. Hopefully I don't have any more locals. I think this is the last one. Okay, so we have the count small letter, right? Because we need to have the count small letter in the word greater than zero. And then we have this total small that I talked about that's gonna tell us, do we need to take this letter? And so when we run into a small letter, we're gonna decrement the count, we're gonna increment the count of the small letter, and we're gonna decrement the count of the total small letters left in the word. And then we run into the big, pretty straightforward, we just increment the count. We don't need to have the count of the big letter because we're only gonna push to the result when our count is greater than zero, like I said, so we, we have to have big letters. So this is where we check if we can reset the small the, the small character, like I said. So if the count is less than zero and we have characters left over, then we can reset it. So we're going to reset the count and we're going to reset the count of small characters. We're pretty much resetting our you know our word that we're currently on, like our our current word. And then this is the this is what you need to actually check if you can if you can append to the result. So if you do have small characters in your current string, then you can append it. Totally fine. And so the way this would work is if the count is negative, uh, if the count is negative, it would reset it. And then the result is never going to go less than zero because I initialized the result to zero. So we are technically like comparing it. So you can compare it to negative values, but it'll never go below zero. Then you return the result. And then now this result is separate. So this result is a totally different result. This is going to be the result that we're actually going to be returning overall. Okay, so this result is actually going to be different than this result, like I said. And then what you want to do is you want to actually take every single letter that's in your counter because those are all the letters that are in your word. You don't need to go like A through Z. You can just take every single letter that's in the word only. You turn it into a set. You can technically use a list because these shouldn't have a duplicate. So I think lists will work as well. I don't think I needed to use a set. I think I ended up like I had some other implementation with a set, but then I changed to this. But either way, either one works. So then you just loop through all of the characters that are actually in the word, and then you have another loop, right? So you have a nested loop, and then you just say if the characters aren't equal, because if they are equal, then your then your count should always be zero, so you can just save some time. There's no point, right? If like B's are big and A's are small, or B's are big and B's are small, your count's gonna be zero, so there's no point there. So if they're equal, then you just to maximize the result where you say, you know, res is maximum of Kadane care one and care two. And so you're gonna have every single combination of care one and care two. And so let's think about what would be the time and space here. So it's pretty straightforward. So the time is gonna be, so this is worst case 26 squared, right? Squared, and then we are also looping through S every single time in this Cadane's algorithm. So it's gonna be 26 squared times S. You can argue this is linear or constant time. I mean, it's, it's a decently big number, but yeah. 
And then for the space, I'm just going to say it's O of 1 because this counter is only 26 letters. So that's small enough to obviously be O of 1. We don't have anything else. We just have like constant. We just have. Actually, we do have the set, but the set is also only 26 letters max. So this is only 26 letters. This is only 26 letters. So that's O of 1, and that's O of 1. Okay, right, and that's going to be it for this video. So hopefully you liked it. And if you did, uh, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Oh, yeah, by the way, let's try to run this. <laughs> I forgot about that. But yeah, I think it should be good. Unless I screwed something up. It does take quite a while to run, for sure. I'll be good. I think it does a lot of tests. And yeah. So it does work. And yeah, hopefully you liked this video. And if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.